So here it is guys, sadly this is the last episode of our Destination Unknown series. We started in Singapore six months ago and now we are ending with our final destination on the beautiful Greek island of Santorini. Santorini is widely known for being the supermodel of the Greek islands with its glorious views and just stunning buildings. The question is though, is Santorini as expensive as people say? On this episode we'll be showing you the latest prices in Santorini, some of the tourist areas and also things to do and see. But can Santorini be done on a budget? Let's go find out. So how do you get to Santorini? Well you've got two options, in summer you can fly from European airports and the Middle East which is May to October or alternatively out of season you can fly from Athens straight down, this is also year round as well. The second option you can go by ferry which is great if you're island hopping and you can book your tickets either online at websites like Ferry Hopper or you can book them in kiosks around the island, it's very affordable as well and very reliable. So not all accommodation here has to cost you thousands. You can get really affordable accommodation from as little as £30 a night. And we stayed in affordable accommodation in both Fira and Parissa. In Parissa, we stayed at Studio Mary. The apartment was pretty basic, but functional for what we needed, and it cost just £31 a night. So we're now in Fira and staying at the Hotel Thirassia. At £38 a night, this has offered us really good value for money. Again, it's basic. It's apparently a one star hotel, but I think it's worth much more than that. It has a swimming pool, sun lounges, and the added bonus of fantastic views. So when you visit Santorini, the hardest decision that you'll have to make is what resort to stay in. So let's give you an overview of some of the most popular resorts here in Santorini. First we'll start with Parissa, which is a village on the southeast coast famous for its black sandy beaches and for also being one of the most budget friendly resorts on the island. As it was the start of the season, there wasn't really much open when we visited, but the beachfront is lined with plenty of bars and restaurants. The average price of a main meal here is around 10 to 14 euros, but you can also find more affordable eats here too. We can highly recommend the restaurant Giros Place for some good food at reasonable prices. The menu offers a selection of traditional meat options and salads and the quality is top notch. For two gyros and two glasses of wine it came to a total of 12 euros. Next up we have Kamari, another popular beach resort not too far from Parissa. Like Parissa it has a black sandy beach and has an abundance of beachfront restaurants though the resort itself seems a lot more developed than Parissa and has a lot more shops as well. Prices of accommodation and spending here are about on a par with some slightly higher, overall making it another budget friendly resort in Santorini that you should definitely check out. Next up we have Fera, which is the capital of Santorini. Fera town is one of the most popular places that tourists choose to stay when visiting Santorini for its central location and its convenient transport links. Chances are if you're not staying here, you'll pass through Fira at least once as you'll have to connect through here in order to reach other resorts and villages on the island. In Fira you'll find plenty of luxurious accommodation but if you look hard enough and book in advance it is possible to find accommodation from £35 a night. The town is teeming with shops and restaurants but prices as you can imagine are higher than both Parissa and Kamari and a main meal here on average will cost anywhere between 14 and 20 euros. Having said that, you can still keep the cost down by looking out for offer boards and happy hours. Feyre is made up of lots of traditional white buildings on the hillside which give some of the most incredible views of Santorini and the volcanic island. Speaking of which, make sure you stay tuned as we'll be sharing some of the best Insta Viewpoint locations later on in the vlog. And obviously we couldn't come to Santorini without showing you the best place of all. Let's explore Ia. Ia, often mispronounced as Oya, is the most visitor village in Santorini, made famous for its breathtaking views. Most of the pictures you'll see of Santorini have been taken in Ia, with the stunning backdrops of white buildings, blue domes, windmills and its renowned sunset spot. 
Because of its popular nature, as you can well imagine, this is the most expensive area to stay in in Santorini. Accommodation here starts at around £100 per night in the low season. A main meal will cost anywhere between 18 to 30 euros and above, and drinks prices are basically double what they are anywhere else in Santorini. Because of the small narrow streets, it gets very overcrowded here even in low season, and as you can probably guess, it gets insanely busy on an evening with everyone visiting for sunset. If you are travelling on a budget, then here is not the place that you want to be staying, but it definitely is worth visiting for a few hours to soak up the views and ambience of the village. Again, you don't have to spend a small fortune here. Make sure you look out for the offer boards as an alternative to eating in the fancy restaurants and buy your drinks from the supermarket. If you're happy to sit on a wall, you can still experience here with the same views for a fraction of the price. So if you're travelling on a budget or you're a backpacker, you can forget travelling around the island by taxi. Even the shortest fare will set you back about €25. Euros. We've not used any other taxis apart from the one that took us from the airport to Parissa when we first arrived. We booked this in advance through booking.com and it cost us £30. So the most affordable way of travelling around Santorini is on the bus. Now the bus fares start at €1.60 per person. The downside is with this that all the buses feed into Fira, so depending on your final destination you will have to get off the bus in Fira, connect onto another bus to take you there. So although the buses are fantastic to travel on, the downside is it can be quite time consuming, especially when you're having to connect in Fira. Best advice, check the timetables which are available at most bus stops and try and plan your journey ahead. Another downside is, especially in peak season, the buses can get so busy and it is carnage. Just because you're the first in the queue, you're not always guaranteed to get a seat. It also runs between the port and the airport as well, which is great when you're on a budget. If you fancy a bit of adventure in your life and want to do it yourself, you could even hire a quad. These start from 30 to 40 euros per day, depending on the engine size. If you're visiting Santorini on a cruise, then there's two ways to get up to the town of Fira. One is by donkey, which we do not recommend, so please don't do it, guys. And the second is the cable car. Although be aware that when you're coming back, the cable car might have long queues if there's lots of cruise ships in port at the same time. So, the moment you've all been waiting for. Here are some of the best photo spots and viewpoints that we found in Santorini. Okay guys, so here we are on our final scene of our final vlog of the series for Destination Unknown and I think we're both feeling very emotional. This is it for us now, this, this is, is it. this is the final, the final bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been, we had plans that tonight we were going to go to a fancy lavish restaurant and have some cocktails, live up the high life for one drink. But then we kind of thought, do you know what, why are we doing that? Why are we going to pay extra money to enjoy the same views that we're getting right now? And just, we've got a couple of beers from the supermarket and we're having exactly the same experience as all these guys here. I'm really sorry if you can't understand me. I can't speak. John, do you want to give the stats? Over six months we travelled 42,316 miles. Took 34 flights. Spent 88 hours, 38 minutes in the air and visited 32 towns and cities across 13 countries. It's been an absolutely amazing journey and if you've been a part of that we thank you so much. Um, thank you. You've probably never seen us like this but for us, um, yeah. This, is, this has been make or break for us and we've really, really enjoyed it. Do we regret it? No we don't. We've had some of the most amazing experiences and even the worst ones, I wouldn't even change. Thank you for supporting us every step of the way. And wasting 
nearly every Sunday of your lives watching us as well. You know, that's a there big is deal. That. There is that. There's much more, you know, there's, there's many more adventures to come. And for us, we don't know where that adventure will be. We don't know when it will be. But we just hope that you'll be a part of it as well. What are our plans next? Well, we'll be going home. We'll be going back to work of some description. And probably bringing you a next vlog of how we managed to travel for six months on a budget. <laughs> One thing that I wouldn't change more than anything is my travel partner as well. Yeah, you would. Maybe sometime. Mm. So for now, we're gonna soak up the rest of the evening with our drinks, with these incredible views. Probably do a lot of crying, but for now, we're gonna love you and leave you for one final time. And let's recap some of the highlights <laughs> of our six month adventure. Cheers. Thank you for watching. And welcome to Singapore. This is the place that we are kicking off our six month trip filming the longest series that we have ever done before. You're doing so well. Welcome to Melbourne. We're here with our great mate, Jeremy. Hello. We're in Sydney. Today we're in Cairns. Welcome to Bali. So I really hope this place is worth it because we're actually walking down a motorway right now. We are on the beautiful island of Boracay in the Philippines. Oh, there's people coming as well. <laughs> I need to go back, go back. <laughs> Hello. We are on the picturesque island of Caron. We can, we can see it all from here. No need, no need to go any further. We are so unfit. I finished that, I will be singing. <laughs> Just following a guy with a cow at the minute. They know where they're going. That's good enough for me. Welcome to Tokyo! Travel guys on YouTube, subscribe. <gasps> we are leaving Tokyo and heading to Osaka. You've got incoming, Becky. <laughs> little chance of doing this. Absolute carnage. Welcome to Hoi An. Good morning from a very sunny Chiang Mai. I just realised now that none of these are real. Good afternoon from Ao Nang. What's up? <laughs> Good morning guys from Kuala Lumpur. Chicken skin. We are back in Sri Lanka. We love these. We are in India. So we're standing now in what is the world's second largest street food kitchen. We are at one of the seven wonders of the world right now. <laughs> no off. Just currently a hive of activity. We are in the Maldives. My balls. 
Welcome to Istanbul. This is honestly just the best part of traveling is the food. We are in Greece. But my hair down there, I've not got my hat again.